Hey everybody, this is Alex Cox with Tripwire. I'm a senior systems engineer. I've been with the company about five and a half years or so. And I'm here today with a special guest, Eric Dobroth from ServiceNow. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, my name is Eric Dobroth. I'm a senior solutions consultant and I've been working with ServiceNow for about three years. Excellent. And today, uh, together, we're going to show you a little bit about Tripwire Enterprise, a little bit about ServiceNow, and uh, help you discover some of the business benefits of putting the two together. I think you'll find that uh, it's pretty compelling. On the Tripwire side, we're going to be talking about Tripwire Enterprise. And as many Tripwire Enterprise customers out there know, it's a fantastic platform for discovering who's changing what, when, and where, and really helping take control of configuration drift and stopping entropy. And it's also very good at you know getting baselines for your systems, just checking in on them, making sure that you know where they're at, including uh, analyzing those systems to determine if uh, they're uh, easy to hack or if uh, you know their, their security configurations are in line with your uh, uh, security configuration policies, compliance policies, and so on. And I'll pass it to Eric for the uh, ServiceNow side. Thank you. Yeah, the ServiceNow, uh, ServiceNow side is uh, a service management automation platform. It offers uh, applications designed to help IT departments and any other service department track and manage workflow for the processes that they run on. Uh, ServiceNow provides a single system of record to support incident management, change management, request management, project management, uh, asset management, and much more. So what you're looking at right here is kind of that, uh, that description of applications that ServiceNow uh, supports. And what we're known most for is that center block there, the service management block. And you can see then a number of different departments, legal, finance, field services. So th those are the other service departments I might uh, have, you might have been uh, uh, talking about. But we're going to be focusing on the IT department. And so that is going to be uh, with incident management, with change management, with the configuration management database. But we have uh, applications that support IT governance, risk, and compliance, which will be also useful. Um, vendor resource management or vendor performance management, uh, performance analytics, uh, operations management, and more. So what you're looking at right now is the ServiceNow user interface. ServiceNow is a software as a service supplied uh, platform. And on this page, you're seeing a dashboard of some of the kinds of uh, output you can see from ServiceNow. So in this particular case, we're looking at an ITIL homepage. It's showing me a breakdown of incidents by the category that they're uh, associated with or items in uh, their, their current escalation level. We can see work that's assigned to me or to my group. Uh, but back up here at the top on the incidents by category, we can see that, that, that donut showing a breakdown of eight software incidents and four hardware incidents and four inquiries and four network uh, items. If I click through on any one of these, it's live data. So it goes right into those four incidents that are making up that chunk of the, uh, of the donut there. Now at the top, I can see an incident here opened by Jared, and there's a situation where they can't access the Exchange server we open that record up, we can actually see what that incident is. And this is the kind of information that's being tracked to help uh, service desks manage the work that's coming into them. So you can see the incident itself, who's calling, um, where they're located at, what the category for the incident is. We can see the configuration item that this is associated with. So this, this particular incident is related to our exchange servers. And right here, that configuration item identifies an ex uh, a specific uh, server that's part of that. And if I click on this link right here, we can actually see the business service management map that's supporting that. Now, these CIs, these configuration items, and all of the items that they're supporting, those business services that you see at the top, these are all part of the configuration management database that's included with ServiceNow. This configuration management database powers pretty much everything in ServiceNow, and it's the key for the integration between ServiceNow and, uh, and Tripwire Enterprise. back into our incident form, if we need to go and address this particular issue with this Exchange server being down, we might need to uh, create a change request to accomplish that. Our Exchange server is a configuration item that's in production. 
I can do that very quickly simply by right clicking at the top and uh, selecting create change from there. And that, bring, uh, that brings up a new record form. It copied information from our incident, so that's part of the, the automation that's associated with that. And this allows me to identify things like uh, uh, when this, uh, this change request is going to go live or when it's uh, expected to be uh, uh, completed by. Um, it allows me to initiate workflow associated with that, and you can actually see the workflow already having been engaged here. And if I open up the, uh, the workflow view for that, you can see that it's currently waiting for an approval from the manager of the user that initiated this particular change request. Again, if I go back in here, I can see the approver. I'm currently logged in as a, a, a system administrator, so I'm going to go ahead and move this along. And I can do so simply by um, identifying this requ request as approved. I simply go down here, I, uh, select approved, and check the box there. And that progresses our workflow. And in fact, if we go back into the workflow view, you can see that uh, uh, we've moved up to generating the tasks for the forward schedule of change here, a planning task, a building task, a testing task, which, which if it fails, if it's incomplete, will roll back to the plan, and finally an implementation task. Well, this workflow is represented right on the change request itself. And so if I refresh the uh, view here, we can actually see those tasks. The planning task is the one that's opened, and as soon as we complete that, uh, it'll move into the build task. This change request allows us to add uh, uh, any amount of information as well, and we can take a, uh, 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 a file, such as a manifest file from our, uh, uh, from our Tripwire Enterprise implementation, and we can include that as part of the information associated with this particular change request. And that's really helpful in that you know you can identify not just that uh, system or service should be changing, but exactly like maybe how should it be changing, right? So like what what files are expected to change and, and so on. Is that the kind of thing that you put typically put in a manifest like that? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, sounds good. So why don't we take a look at, at Tripwire Enterprise and see how um, we can take advantage of this awesome platform. Because when you look at ServiceNow, um, there's a lot of information there about all the assets that are there, all the services that are in use, and, and, and what's needed to keep those uh, business services running. Um, and on the Tripwire side with Tripwire Enterprise, on the other hand, uh, we also have the ability to uh, provide real-time information on, you know, change in the environment. Um, this is something where, you know, if you combine the great plans and, and context with ServiceNow with the great, you know, events and facts from Tripwire Enterprise, you can really get a good uh, kind of portal into what's going on, is it good or bad, and, and maybe what should we do about it. Um, so if we look at the workflow for the integration with ServiceNow and Tripwire Enterprise, um, by the way, this is typically set up through our professional services team uh, through an engagement. Uh, and um, basically, once that integration is set up in place, Tripwire Enterprise can catch changes as they occur, as it normally would. However, with the integration, we can integrate in, with, uh, with ServiceNow through their API and determine if there's a change request associated with that change. Uh, if there is not a change request associated with it, we can optionally create an incident on the ServiceNow side, uh, allowing you to immediately compare those change plans with those change facts and call attention to the incidents, you know, what, what, what's happening that we did not plan. Uh, in this way, it, it becomes more and more possible to stay on top of unauthorized changes. And really, um, from an operational standpoint, this is really, really beneficial because uh, you know, a number of studies have shown that, that a large amount of uh, uh, downtime, uh, of, often quoted as about 80% uh, of downtime, uh, comes from unauthorized, unplanned changes. So that means you're going to sp spend 80% um, of your time firefighting issues that uh, self-inflicted you know, injuries self-inflicted injuries right yeah exactly and so uh, if you gain visibility into these incidents uh, then you can improve your change process and make sure that you um, you know keep those unplanned changes down uh, on the other hand uh, we can also use this great information from ServiceNow on the tripwire side to automatically approve changes in the Tripwire Enterprise uh, interface so that our users can focus just on those unauthorized changes. 
The authorized uh, changes will still be there for forensics purposes, but uh, with the integration, we can show the needle in the haystack a lot better. Um, so I'm going to jump over into my uh, Tripwire Enterprise environment. I can kind of show you what that looks like there. With Tripwire Enterprise, uh, those of you who are Tripwire Enterprise customers, you're pretty familiar with interfaces like these, nice dashboards that show you what's going on. Uh, and there's this neat little change process compliance uh, report type that shows you all the changes that are going on over a given time period, but then also goes and breaks them down into authorized versus unauthorized. And this is where the integration with, with ServiceNow uh, is very, very beneficial. So we can, of course, go and review the changes that were authorized and could be reconciled to uh, a given change ticket and see what happened. Uh, we can put the change request numbers in there and identify that on the Tripwire side and save that information. Um, that could be very useful. However, um, typically more interesting is the unauthorized change activity that took place. And now we have the needles in the haystack called out into their own groups. So on the Tripwire Enterprise interface here, I can go look and for any given day, I can look at the unauthorized changes that took place. Uh, I can see who made uh, these changes, what they were changing, uh, when, and also where, in this case, uh, changes on this Linux server. Um, and when you're in the Tripwire Enterprise portal, you can also uh, drill in and get more information and see specific information like what lines in the file changed and all that good stuff. You can even see what application made the change as you go a little bit deeper. Uh, but the important thing is that we're providing these facts on the Tripwire Enterprise side and then aligning them with your, your change plans. Uh, so with that said, uh, let's jump back into, uh, the trip, uh, into the ServiceNow instance. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, let's take a look at uh, what this looks like when you combine uh, this, this great portal of information with our change facts. Uh, as an IT uh, ops or IT uh, you know, security engineer, I may want to have a view into the big picture. Like, and maybe, let's say, I'm based out of the, uh, my uh, Portland headquarters here, so I may be more interested in what's going on incident-wise in, in my vicinity. So if I go ahead and click on this incident on the uh, critical incidents map, I can see some of the data that's generated by uh, Tripwire Enterprise. Uh, in this case here, Tripwire Enterprise has called out an incident. Uh, it's specified the location of the Tripwire headquarters. Uh, and it's showing us a configuration item here has uh, changed, this jaku.galaxy.ffa system. Uh, so this is great. This is this is excellent at first because as as you know an IT ops an IT security engineer, I'm using the same interface that I do most of my work in day to day to jump over and, and take a look at some great tripwire information too. Um, that's immediately a good win. Uh, but I think also the ability to pull in some of this context that Eric was talking about before is super valuable. Uh, so in this case here, you know, in the business services map, I have this Jaku uh, asset. And I can immediately learn a little bit more about it. I can immediately see that it's a, a point of sale system. It follows, it follows under the uh, retail business service. Uh, and I can learn a little bit more about it. It's, it's running this Cardwire uh, point of sale software on it. So I've learned a little bit more about my asset and I can visualize that in new ways and, and really understand not just the fact that there's unauthorized change taking place, but what does it mean to my business? Yeah, but who's gonna be impacted and who you need to notify. Right, absolutely. Um, you know, speaking of which, if you take a look at this and you, if you, if you look at this asset, I believe we can gather more information like, you know, who owns this asset. As you can see here, this is owned by me uh, on the bottom here. And um, you can get more data on that piece. Uh, in addition, if we go and take a different look at this here from this side of things, uh, we can also pull out some extra information about this uh, incident. Uh, like, for example, if I go in and look at the live feed for this incident, uh, I can see other sorts of things, like maybe even um, a link to a report from Tripwire giving me more information about this. Uh, if, I, if I click this link from the live feed, it will give me a quick launch in the Tripwire Enterprise, and I can see the asset there and any um, you know, unapproved changes on that asset. Uh, in this case, I can see that there are many, many different uh, files that have been added. You can tell from the, the red plus there. Uh, and of course, you know, inside Triple Enterprise, I have lots of great ability to go in and see, you know, are these new files, in this case, brand new file, uh, you know, even what the content is of those files, 
so this one looks pretty interesting. Memory scraper, scraper kind of stands out. <laughs> uh, but uh, also attribute level information about those files and permissions and things like that. Uh, really rich, detailed information about what's happening on the server with all the business service context that you need from ServiceNow. Uh, between the two, we can really put together what's going on and, and whether this is an important incident. Uh, and if I jump back, we can also, I mean, there's a great link to Tripwire Enterprise, and you can immediately pivot into there and see what's going on. Or, if you prefer, you can view it on the ServiceNow side via attached reports. So if we go into the view link here, um, you can see a similar view in PDF format and get the basics, like, you know, who changed it, uh, you know, what changed, when and where, the same sort of view that we looked at in Tripwire, but more known a PDF report format. Yeah, a number of your uh, ServiceNow users, maybe business users, they don't have any business being inside the Tripwire Enterprise Console, but mm -hmm. seeing that report attached to the uh, to the record can give them that context. That's a good point. Yeah, and and this way they don't need two logins; they can see everything from from Tripwire uh, <laughs> from Tripwire in ServiceNow. <laughs> Excellent. So um, that's, a, that's a quick review of how we can kind of tie this together. Uh, there, there are definite, uh, definitely other things that we can do to provide more information to ServiceNow from the Tripwire Enterprise side. Like if I go back to our uh, presentation here, uh, I've shown that um, we can, of course, show, you know, for an instant, what changed, who changed it, all that good stuff, how to change. Uh, we can also provide a little bit of context that the Tripwire Enterprise Console may have, like the level of vulnerability from the host. Uh, we do that through integration with uh, uh, vulnerability management platforms like our Tripwire IP360 platform and more. Uh, and you know, in addition to these great details that we've been going over already, uh, there's another neat workflow here that I think is uh, worth taking a look at too. Um, so in addition to catching changes, which Tripwire Enterprise is very good at doing, we're also good at analyzing systems for security and compliance. So as a, let's say as a change occurs, or as you get your initial baseline, uh, Tripwire is going to catch that, pull that information in, and then compare that system state information against your configuration policies. They can be operational policies, they can be security policies, or they can be secure, uh, uh, compliance policies, like the ones we see here with PCI DSS and, and HIPAA and NERC and so on. Uh, but ultimately, uh, we can assess the system state and the configuration item state of these assets and say, if it's, if it's in line with our systems, then you know, maybe that's a good change, especially if it made us go from a, a poor state to a compliant state, <laughs> then that's, that's generally a good change and maybe one that you might want to automatically approve. On the other hand, if you go from a secure and compliant state to a non-compliant state, then you might want to generate a ServiceNow incident for that as well. And uh, in that way, um, you, can, you can help stay on top of the, the, the um, system state in real time and make sure that information is published to ServiceNow when there are any you know, gaps in security, compliance, or operational excellence. And when that incident, incident is generated within ServiceNow, then at that point, business logic associated with that process takes over. So the assignment of that incident to the appropriate team to mm -hmm. go and handle that will be handled by the, uh, uh, the workflow associated with ServiceNow. That's perfect, because then you, know, you don't have to worry about the Tripwire Enterprise admin going and contacting everyone manually and maybe not knowing who to reach out to. Uh, and, and you don't have to worry about accounts in Tripwire Enterprise for, for accessing all of this great information. Exactly so. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in terms of you know, what kind of information is published with this side of the integration, uh, we can, of course, say, OK, where is the issue? What asset is that? And, and of course, once we have ServiceNow context, we can say, what business unit does this affect? Uh, but then, you know, what is the issue? Uh, is it maybe uh, a, a encryption setting? You know, is it, is it uh, user accounts are, are easy to compromise? Uh, and also, you know, what is the evidence? In a lot of cases, you know, people are concerned that a system that's analyzing uh, your devices may generate uh, false positives and point people in the wrong direction and waste people's time. Um, so what we do as, with Tripwire Enterprise is we not only say what the issue is, but we, we share the evidence in the report, too, and say, this is what we found in this file, and this is why we think this is a bad idea. 
And then also, uh, we provide remediation guidance. So in the bold section here, it's very small in this report here, but uh, in the screenshot. But uh, you can see how to fix the issue as well. And I think, you know, in, in IT ops engineers, I think in a lot of cases, uh, it's, it's one thing to tell them, hey, something's wrong. But it's another thing to say, hey, you know, this is go wrong. Go do this thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, go yeah. do this thing. Please fix it this way. Yeah. Uh, we've had uh, a, a lot of our mutual customers uh, embed this information in the change request, like Eric was showing before. It's like they put, they create a change request that says, hey, go fix this, and then Im embed uh, our guidance for how to fix that issue. In that way, you know, you have, uh, you have change plans created to fix configuration issues, uh, and it's, it's, it's all nice and uh, prepared for you in advance. So from, from a high level overview, of the integration that we've been discussing today between ServiceNow and, and Triple Enterprise. For, for my mind, I think some of the, the key benefits are it, it really helps you take control of change. You know, it's, it, with, with these two systems that are excellent in helping you automate your plans around change and make sure that, that all that, that business service information and context is shared as that goes through. And then Tripwire Enterprise's piece to, to detect the facts, detect the incidents, detect the events. I think when you combine the two, it really gives you an effective platform for really taking control of change, keeping your systems online, and, and also really improving mean time to repair, right? Yeah. You know, because if, um, if one of your systems goes down, uh, one of the first questions a lot of IT engineers are going to ask is, what changed? What exactly. changed? <laughs> exactly, right? And we have those facts, whether they are part of the plans or not. Uh, and then, as we were just discussing before, it, it's a great single pane of glass. You know, being able to see everything in service now makes everybody's jobs easier because, you know, in, in the ITSM, that's, that's ideally where, you know, a lot of the uh, engineers want to live because they have all the information. It's just the perfect place to get everything you need. Uh, and we can provide information on change detection, uh, improve change reconciliation, and also harden systems with our uh, configuration policy assessment and keep them in that way by reporting incidents when gaps arise. So uh, with that said, I, I think that's a, a, a good run through of the integration. Uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to shoot me a note. Uh, my email is acox at tripwire.com. And I, I'm good friends with Eric here. So if I can't answer it, I'll get it from him. Sounds great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody, for your time. I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and we'll see you next time.